Hey, what are you doing there? Oh, excuse me, I have to use the bathroom. What? Are you kidding me? You can't use it here. You are a stranger, so go outside. My mother-in-law left me speechless. On the day I visited my in-law's house for the first time since my marriage, I was supposed to enjoy dinner with everyone, but instead, I was faced with childish harassment. From the first time I met her, I knew that she didn't think much of me. I never imagined that she would go as low as that though. I had no choice but to leave the house and find a nearby restroom. Little did she know that I would later find herself in deep trouble. My name is Gabby, 28 years old. I'm a happy newlywed. My husband's name is Rick. He's 32 years old. He's an impressive guy who holds a high position at a major company for his age. I met him at a friend's birthday party. I had no expectation of a romantic encounter and I was just there to enjoy the celebration with my friends. That's where I met him, and we ended up getting married. You never know what life brings to you. However, if you ask me if my marriage is perfect, I can say yes with confidence. Although I am very content with Rick, there is one trouble that I cannot even tell him about. It is his mother. To put it simply, she doesn't think very highly of me. I realized that the first day I met her. It was when Rick and I visited his parents for the first time. Dad, Mom, this is Gabby. We are planning to get married. Rick introduced me to them. That was my first time experiencing something like that. I wanted to present a good image to them, but I was so nervous that I couldn't speak fluently. Rick's dad, Luke, smiled gently at me, perhaps sensing my anxiety. It's a pleasure to meet you, Gabby. I hear that you've been taking good care of him. It's my pleasure, too. I'm the one being cared of. You don't have to be so modest. You are too good for him. You are such a bright young lady. Thank you. So kind of you. Rick was smiling at our casual conversation. On the other hand, I noticed that his mom, Brianna, remained stoic. When our eyes suddenly met, she gave me a fake smile. She spoke to me in the sweetest voice she could make. I'm also glad to have a lovely girl like you as my daughter-in-law. You too are very kind. By the way, would you prepare drinks with me? I'd like to talk with you alone. Of course, I'm glad to. Rick said I could just wait with him, but that was not how it worked. I had to be proactive and make even the slightest positive impression. I followed her to the kitchen. As soon as we were alone, her expression turned cold. I even felt fear for her instant change. I opened my mouth trying not to be bland. Um, Brianna? Don't call me by my first name, you're rude. Rude? I hate pretentious women like you. How did you seduce my son? No, I didn't. I really love him. You are such a liar. You are just after his money because he works for a prestigious company, aren't you? No way! That's really not true. No matter how many times I denied it, she didn't listen to me. In the end, she made drinks all by herself, and all I did was just stand there. It didn't take me long to realize that I was called into the kitchen not to help her, but to be told off. After she finished preparing the drinks, she said clearly, Let me tell you this. I will never accept a woman like you as my daughter-in-law. Wait, please. Please listen to me. I don't have time to be trifled with. I will pretend to get along with you in front of Rick, but I will never accept you. Remember that. She put the drinks on the tray and went back to the living room. She completely changed from what she had been a moment before 
and acting if nothing ever happened. We continued to have small talk, but I was so anxious that I could not concentrate on the conversation at all. As we were driving back home, Rick asked me, a little concerned, What's wrong with you, honey? Why? No, it's just that your expression is so stiff. You are always smiling. I'm sorry. I've been nervous all day. I'm a little tired. Oh, of course. Let's go home and chill. On the way home, he stopped at my favorite fast food. I had to force a smile on him, who was trying to make me feel better. There was no way I could tell him that his mom hated me. In the end, we got married without having a talk about it. That was when the Hell's Gate opened. Upon our marriage, I quit my job at Rick's request and became a full time housewife. One day, my phone rang while doing housework with the TV on. Who is this number? I stared at the screen for a few seconds at the unfamiliar number. Since it was not blocked, I decided to answer the call anyway. Yes, hello? Hello, Gabby? Gab, Brianna? The caller was none other than my mother in law. As soon as I heard her voice, my previous anxiety came back, and I was at a loss for words. She let out a sigh before speaking. <sighs> I can't believe you're really married. I thought you would have backed down after I told you so much. I'm sorry, but I really love Rick. You are persistent, aren't you? Anyway, I won't accept it. You became a housewife so that you can do whatever you want with his money, right? No, that's not true. He asked me to quit my job. Oh, please. You gold digging parasite. What the hell? Listen, if you don't want me to pester you anymore, leave my son, okay? She hung up on me after that. As the beeping of a disconnected line echoed in my ear, I was tormented by an indescribable feeling. Why couldn't she understand me? I wasn't after money. I married him because I truly loved him. I still wished to have a good relationship with her. I knew she was obsessed with Rick from what he had told me and what I had seen. I had no idea that she would be so hostile to me because of jealousy. Since then, she started calling me frequently. It was always during the daytime on weekdays. In other words, when Rick was at work and I was home alone. I still couldn't gather up my courage to tell him about her and didn't know how to deal with it. I had no choice but to listen to her sarcasm in silence and endure it. One day, January was drawing to a close, and Rick and I were on our way to his parents' house. We were supposed to visit them over Christmas, but Rick had caught COVID at work, and we were both infected. We couldn't leave the house during the holidays and had to postpone our plan. We were visiting them for the first time since our marriage that day. Luke was away on a business trip. And was going to be back the next day. Brianna was the only one at home. The fact alone made my heart heavy. When I pressed the doorbell, she appeared with a big smile on her face. Rick, Gabby, welcome! I've been waiting for you guys. Hi, Brianna. It's been a long time. We have been in touch from time to time, but it's always nice to see you in person. Yes, indeed. Let me tell you, it wasn't from time to time that I heard from her. She spent about an hour insulting me almost every day. She seemed not to want Rick to know about it, so she continued to play the role of a good mother in law. We were planning to stay overnight, and I was worried about what would befall me. As I let out an inaudible sigh, she said to Rick, I'm sorry, but would you mind if I asked you to go and buy some groceries? Oh,、um, why? I forgot to buy our ingredients for dinner. 
I also forgot to pick up the cake I ordered. Oh, come on. You are forgetting too much, aren't you? Are you alright? I've got the car, so I will go now. My bad. Gabby, make yourself at home. She smiled at me. It was not an honest smile, but one that seems to contain something. If I followed Rick, I was sure I would be hammered by her later. I reluctantly stayed behind alone with her. I sat on the sofa and waited patiently for him to return. Just as she went to the kitchen, I got up to the bathroom. Rick had told me where the bathroom was before. I headed toward it, relying on my memory. As I was about to open the door, I felt a presence behind me. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I turned in the direction of the voice and saw Brianna standing there. Her expression was irritated, and I could tell she was anything but calm. I responded calmly so as not to upset her any farther. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't excuse myself before I came out. Answer the question. What are you doing? Um, I have to use the bathroom. What? Are you kidding me? You can't use my bathroom. Um, why not? You are a stranger. Go outside. I feel gross if you use it. She giggled and sussed my reaction. I felt as if my blood drained out of my body. There was no point in trying to get along with her anymore. I became painfully aware of that. I knew she despised me, but I never imagined that she would go as low as that. I couldn't deal with it. There was no way I could build a good in-law relationship with someone like her. I understand. Then I ran out of the house. I didn't know where the shops and restaurants were because I didn't have a sense of the area yet. I could still hold it for a little while, but it couldn't have lasted until Rick came back. Walking aimlessly through the neighborhood, I thankfully came into sight of the town center. I hurriedly went into a public restroom at the train station. As I came outside, I heard someone calling my name. I looked around, but didn't see anyone familiar. Then, I saw Luke running toward me with an arm up in the air. Oh Luke, I thought you were coming back tomorrow. I finished my work early, and I heard you guys are coming today, so I rushed back. Mm, that's great. Anyway, why are you here alone? Oh well, that's... Seeing me fumble for words, he must have sensed something was up. The smile on his face faded, and he asked me seriously. Gabby, I'm afraid to ask you this, but did my wife do something to you? No, nothing like that. Please be honest with me. When you came over last time, your face was very dark after coming out of the kitchen. I've been worried about you. Well, Luke, I found myself sobbing at his attentiveness. I continued to cry aloud, not caring that there were people around me. Sitting on a nearby bench, Luke silently waited for me to calm down. When I told him about all the harassment I had received, he listened without interrupting and seemed to be unable to suppress his irritation at the end. When I had finished telling him everything, he said, Let's end this today. How? He hailed a cab and we went back to his house. Rick had already returned and was surprised to see Luke and me appear together. Hey, why are you guys together? I mean, why are you here, Dad? I finished work earlier than expected. I need to talk to you. What's up? It's important. Luke called for a meeting, and everyone gathered in the living room. He shouted at Brianna right away. You've got to be kidding me! How low are you to bully Gabby in such a childish manner? What are you talking about out of the blue? What do you mean by a bully? Don't you play dumb? I just heard from Gabby 
about all the harassment you've done to her. I have no idea what you are talking about. I have never said anything bad to her. Then why did she go to all the trouble of using the restroom outside? Because, you know, I was using it. We have two toilets. If there were only two of you here, one of them would have been open, right? Her expression became distorted as he pressed her. What's going on, mom? Rick sounded angry, but Luke continued. I just told you, she has been harassing Gabby for a long time. What the hell? You pretend to be friendly with her, but behind my back, you are bullying my wife? Rick became curious. No, no, listen to me. She desperately pleaded with him, who continued to ignore her. Then, she became defiant all of a sudden. She revealed her true nature and turned her anger toward me. It's your fault. Look what you have done. My fault? Yes, it is, because you married my son. If you had been a prettier and more obedient wife, I wouldn't have bullied you. Rick and Luke were at a loss for words for such a ridiculous excuse. I realized that it was a waste of time. I told her in a stern voice, If I were prettier and more obedient, what bullshit! You would have insulted anyone just the same, no matter who she was. You just don't like me marrying your precious son. That doesn't change no matter who he gets married to, isn't that right? No! I hate women like you. Can't you understand that we are in this situation right now because of your immature behavior? You are losing your family because of your stupid way of thinking. If you don't understand, experience it for yourself. Your family will abandon you and you will be on your own for the rest of your life. She fell to the floor, moaning. There was no one to offer her a hand. Instead, we just looked at her with disgust. After that, Rick and I returned home without staying overnight. Luke told us that he wanted to take care of things with her alone. A few days later, he told me that he filed for a divorce. At first, she violently refused to separate. She had borrowed thousands of dollars from him, so he gave her two choices pay the money back right away, or get a divorce. Given such a choice, she, who had neither income nor savings, finally decided to divorce him. She has no place to go, so she is currently working at a factory with staff housing. She is now in her mid-sixties, so it must be hard life for her. This is all her own fault. There is no room for extenuating circumstances. I, on the other hand, have a more pleasant life now that I don't hear from her anymore. I visit Luke regularly, and the three of us go on trips together sometimes. Was it coincidence or inevitability that I ran into him at the station at that time? Either way, I can only be grateful to him for believing my story and taking action immediately. I will never forget this gratitude. I will continue to live my life to the fullest in order to protect my happy days.